So I want to talk about lack of interoperative stability. What did I do wrong? How do I solve the problem? These are my disclosures. It has nothing to do with the talk. So I think this question is somewhat approach specific. I want to talk about the anterior, posterior, and the anterolateral approach. And I kind of group a little bit the posterior and the anterolateral approach together, and you're going to see why that is. The goal is to avoid dislocations. I actually feel it's great if I find a problem intraoperatively and it doesn't show up four weeks after surgery or three months out because then I have a patient that might need a revision surgery. So I do think it makes a ton of sense to make sure intraoperatively that things are as stable as they could potentially be. Now with the anti approach, I give the disclaimer, I operate on the HANA table and it doesn't give me a ton of options to check for stability. And I don't think I need. I really make sure I have good antiversion and inclination. I confirm leg length and offset. I do the uh, chuck test and, uh, and, and that's about it. In my practice, I never really had an issue uh, with instability on the anterior side and I don't think you need to test for instability. Uh, and yes, I'm a foreigner. I just realized I misspelled chuck. Here we go. <laughs> now on the posterior side, I think that's a little bit more important. I'm really careful about how I evaluate. So I flex the hip up all the way to the chest. I bring it back and I internally rotate it at about 90 degree of flexion. And then I externally rotate it and bring it out into full extension. Now I do not accept that a patient on the table when I flex the knee all the way to the chest when it pops out in the back. That's a situation that needs to be addressed. I also don't tolerate if I bring the leg into extension and external rotation and it pops out in the front. These are two things that are very simple to be tested for. I think it's a little more difficult what to make out when the hip kind of dislocates in a 90 degree flex position at some point. I usually try to go to somewhere 50, 60 degrees of internal rotation before I want it to pop out, but that's definitely a little bit more, um, a little bit less than um, uh, clear. I do the chuck test predominantly also for judgment of leg lengths. Uh, leg lengths. Uh, we always do spinal anesthesia, and I agree if you have different types of anesthesia, as different anesthesiologists, it's a little bit less predictable. At my institution, I find it uh, very reliable. Now, the first question is, can I determine the direction of instability, anterior, posterior, or multidirectional? So then, uh, when I have um, the hip come out, um, I need to check the component position. I think there's no question, no matter where the hip comes out, the first issue I want to look at, did I reproduce what I planned for? Is the leg length the same and is the offset restored? If that's the case, I'm already one step ahead and I can move at other, look at other things. Femoral version, now, yes, in the excessive antiversion, you might want to consider an SROM stem. Hopefully, you discovered that before the surgery and had the stem available at the time of surgery. I try not to mess around with the femoral version. I feel the stem goes in a certain position. There's maybe two, three degrees in each direction, but there's not a lot else I can do. Uh, so that leaves me pretty much with the acetabular component, inclination, and antiversion, and that's where the money is. Now, when I look for anterior instability, you know, the hip comes out in the front. Usually it's a combination. They impinge at some point, come out in the front. So I address actually impingement and antiversion by, correct, by taking some antiversion out of the system. I can ultimately change the head size. Now I have to give a disclaimer. I usually go for the larger head size that's available. Now I don't put 32 liners in 46 cups, but I almost always do in a 48 and a 50 cup. I don't put 36 in a 50 cup, but I do always put a 36 in a 52 and up. So there's not as much options for me to change the head size around. I almost never change the bearing option when I have an anterior instability. Posterior, again, I check for impingement and I check my antiversion, that's the first step. I do look at my x-rays. I always get a standing and sitting x-ray, and that helps me a lot anticipating whether a ball comes out in the back or not. Because if they don't roll back in a sitting position, this is really the high-risk patient. Instability on the table and they don't roll back, that's a disaster if you leave it that way. So I then add elevation if I can or I increase the head size. Now I think elevation in a posterior approach for posterior instability is underutilized. Why? Because we're always worried about impingement. But I don't put the elevation at the nine o'clock position, I put it at the seven o'clock position. Relatively far down, they, don't, they should not uh, impinge in extension. And then 
dual mobility, does it add a lot? I don't really think, because for a 48, 52 cup, is there really that much benefit compared to an elevation? I usually use an elevated liner. I hardly ever use dual mobility because it doesn't increase the head side as much as I want. And then I have the high-risk patient, the ones that don't roll back, that have multidirectional instability. For those, maybe a monoblock dual mobility cup is the best option. So what I never do, I never use smaller heads if I can use a bigger head. I never increase offset uh, to gain stability. I never increase leg lengths beyond two, three millimeters. I really don't think that that works. Uh, and I usually try not to use a constrained liner in primary. What I always do, I personally template. I want to make sure that I have the right leg lengths. Uh, and offset. I carefully assess pelvic position and rollback on my uh, preoperative temp uh, on preoperative imaging. And in an anterior approach versus dual mobility, I try to identify the right approach for the high risk patient. And I use elevations for my posterior approaches, but I put them far down. I don't leave them at the nine o'clock position. Thank you.